Okay, and uh, I figured just before we, we uh, tackle part two, um, might as well run through with your problem sets part one more now, okay? So I hope you didn't find it difficult because most of the problem set I gave you is can be solved uh, if you pre-read or at least go through the uh, sample problems, okay? So uh, let's try solving them one by one and uh, see if you guys got the correct answer and uh, you can definitely self-check it. And it's one of the beauties when you're doing your own problem sets on your own without uh, without an, without answers provided already is that you're forced to find if it's really correct or not. Or you could just go through your book and find the final answer there. But uh, at the end of the day, you have to go through the solution. So let's try first with 4-3. So with 4-3, it's pretty simple. Uh, essentially, we're just going to determine the moment of force about 0.0. Same also with 4-7, determine the resultant moment produced by the forces about 0.0. But unlike 4-3, this one only has one force, and uh, we're given a dimension of this of this particular diagram. So the solution we're gonna do this is basically moment time is equal to force times perpendicular distance. So all we have to do is just make sure that we have the appropriate distance here. Some of you already solved this in advance because, you know, I just showed you what kind of problem it is. Um, but just a recap, so here's your 600-pound force rotating at point O, so that's going to be counterclockwise. So that's positive. And all we have to do na lang dito is to identify what is your total perpendicular distance. That will be 4 plus whatever the distance in between this point and this point. So that's going to be 3 cosine 45 degrees. That's it minus one so that will be your x so once that is determined all you have to do is just plug and play 600 pound force positive since it's counterclockwise times is perpendicular distance so that's three cosine 45 degrees minus one plus four feet and you will have about 3072.7922 pound force feet counterclockwise or you could also express this in KIP, and uh, it's okay if you don't know about this because it's not usually practiced naman. Pero one KIP is usually is 1,000 pound force, and KIP is a U.S. customary unit of force. Okay, so just an FYI, okay? For 4-7 naman, we do the same thing. So we determine, uh, okay, ano ba yung perpendicular distance natin dito? And we're being asked the resultant moment here. So we have multiple forces here, so all we have to do is summate. Let's find the summation of all the force, the product of force and its perpendicular distance. So we use this formula. So we get, or you can, you know, solve the moments of each. So what's the moment for 600? What's the moment for under 500 newtons? And what's the moment for 300 newtons? About 0.0. Or you can just equate this in one equation. So in this case, uh, 600 here is going for clockwise. So that's negative 600 times its perpendicular distance. Uh, that's one meter. So 500 naman here is counterclockwise, 500. That's going to be positive. But what's the perpendicular distance? It's going to be whatever is the distance here. So that's 2.5 cosine 45 plus 2 plus 1. And then 300 newtons. This is the Fx. Um, so it's going clockwise times its perpendicular distance, which is 2.5 sine 45. And you got all the, you solve them algebraically. So mind the signs. And you will get around 1,253.55 newton meter counterclockwise or 1.25 kilonewton meter counterclockwise. Don't forget the symbol. Just want to make sure that you guys are following that. For the next one, uh, we're given a uh, figure in, and we're presented in three dimensions x, y, and z, but it, it's following dimension. So it's a piping uh, pipe fixture. Okay. So uh, the pipe assembly is subjected to a force. Uh, we're given a Cartesian vector notation of the force. That's 600 I hat plus 800 J hat minus 500 K hat newtons. Determine the moment of the force about point B. And I added something here about N point A. Just to show you an example of how different the result of the moment would be depending on what the point of uh, rotation is. Okay, so... That's basically our summary. We're, we're here to find the moment at point A and point B. 
given that the force is 600 i hat plus 800 j hat minus 500 k hat newtons so we're gonna start with point a first just to show this just, just to demonstrate my my uh um how different it would be depending on how different the moment would be depending on the point of uh, the axis or, or the point of rotation so in this case at point a so remember since we're dealing with all oh, 3d figures and we're given a cartesian vector of force already we might as well use a cross product so we just have to determine the moment the vector moment is equals to the cross product of uh, position vector and and uh, force vector so we only have to determine which are so in this case we have two since we're going to be pointing at point b and point a for point a we can use rac for point b we're going to use rbc so in this case rac is simply 0.5x at this point what is it 0.5 i hat plus positive 0.7 j hat that's 0.4 plus 0.3 and then it goes down to the z-axis, negative z-axis at negative 0.3 k hat. So that's your uh, that's your position vector there. And all you have to do na lang is substitute the equation. The moment is uh, the moment about a is equal to the cross product of RAC and the force vector, which will yield this particular determinant. Now you solve them algebraically. So you start with i 0 0.7 times negative 500 minus negative 0.3. And 800 then minus 0.5 times negative 500 minus negative 0.3 and 600 plus in this case 0.5 times 800 minus the product of 0.7 and 600 k hat and you simplify them further and you will have the answers of negative 110 i plus 70 j minus 20 k newton meter if you solve at point a now See how different that moment be if you start solving at point P or the axis of rotation is at point P. So at point P, so you determine what RBC is and that's going to be about 0.7 minus 0.3K. If you fail to recall how to achieve that, uh, you, what you can do is just find the distance between them and find the difference between point P and point C. Okay, so minus, so RC minus RB, that's 0.5 minus 0.5, that's 0I. 0.7 minus 0j, that's 0.7j. Negative 0.3k minus 0 is negative 0.3k hat. Okay? So that's how you achieve this particular position vector. Then since you already know your force vector, all you have to do is do the same thing you did in point A, but this time with the coordinates of position vectors BC. And you will have this particular determinant. So we have 0. 0.7, negative 0.3, 600, 800, and negative 500 as indicated just like so. And then you evaluate. So, so you start first with the i, 0.7 times negative 500 minus the product of negative 0.3 and, and, uh, and 800. That's i hat minus, so that's j, so that's 0 times negative 500 minus the product of negative 0.3 and 600 plus 0 times 800 minus the product of 0 0.7 and 600. So we simplify further. We, reali we realize their items is going to be 0. And notice the difference. You see that the moment A is technically not equal to moment B because the axis of rotation is, or the point of rotation is now different. Okay, so be careful next time, okay? So this is a classic uh, problem set to show you the difference of what will be the moment if it's based on point A and what will be the moment if it's based on point B. So there's your answer. That's how different they are. Okay, let's try naman yung 4-37. As you can see here, we have, we're given force. Uh, the, the the magnitude of the vector force 800 newtons and its coordinate direction angles. We are to determine the moment of force about point zero, and we are to express the result as a Cartesian vector. Okay, so just rereading again. Determine the moment of force f about point O. The force has a magnitude of 800 newtons and the coordinate direction angles at alpha 60 degrees, beta 120 degrees, and gamma 45 degrees. Express the result as a Cartesian vector. Good news is you don't have to draw it exactly, but uh, you can convert the force 
the magnitude of 800 newtons and, and convert its Cartesian vector notation form by getting the product of its corresponding um, coordinate direction angle, meaning uh, 800 times, to get to get the x component, x y z components of uh, of 800 newtons, you just have to multiply them by their co the cosine cosine of the coordinate direction angle, respectively. So for x, that will be for f x, that will be 800 times cosine 60 degrees plus uh, 800 times cosine 120 degrees plus 800 times um, cosine 45 degrees. Anyway, so we're here to find the moment at point O. CBN. We're already given this one. And our solution here is, of course, pretty much the same. The moment at point O is equal to the cross product of position, which position vector we're going to be using and force vector. So in this case, we're going to be using this point here. I, uh, the book labeled it OA, but I prefer to just la label it my own. So you can do your own label as long as it's appropriate. And um, I just highlight the line of action of force F here. So ROC, that's good. About point, uh, about point uh, ROC. If you use the one in point B to C, you're going to arrive at a different answer because we're being asked, what's the moment of force about point O? So we're going to use our, this is a frame of reference here, point O to point C. So that's, that'll be our ROC. For ROC is simply 0.4 I hat, 0.5 plus 0.5 J hat and negative 0.3 K hat. Just like your old position vector problem. For F, uh, it's easy to solve since we already know the coordinate direction angle. All we have to do now is just line them up just like so and evaluate. And we will have 400 I hat minus 400 J hat plus 565.6854 K hat. And all we have to do now is just substitute the cross products and uh, establish our determinants, our 3 by 3 matrix, and evaluate. And we will yield the following answer 162.84 i hat minus 346.27 j hat minus 360 k hat newton meter okay if you use the one position vector for bc you're gonna arrive at a different uh moment because because uh it's not about point zero it's now going to be about point Oh, oh, point B. Okay? So just be careful on what, what position vector to use. Okay, this one looks tricky at first, but if you kind of look at it uh, fundamentally, it's actually quite simple. Essentially, we're finding the moment here about point O, and we're given a magnitude of force of 500 newtons. It only looks complicated because there's a curve, but if you evaluate it further, you can actually separate the force into its x and y components and you can also determine its perpendicular distance by uh, doing this particular analysis of dimensions you see here that's three meters and to here this one is not quite so forget to draw it uh, this one has its own particular um, x component x and y component the y components are practically the same However, this one's a bit in it. So, Nisha is full. We're going to rotate to both three meters. It will fall under probably here. That's a, that's one semicircle there. So, so, you really have to find your distances here. So, dx is three meters plus uh, whatever uh, distance here. So, that's going to be three meters and cosine 45 here. Okay? So, we're going to do that. All we have to do now is uh, line up the equation. So in this here, fx is negative since it's clockwise, negative 500 cosine 45 degrees by um, parallel angle theorem. So here, 45 degrees here. That's what I'll mean 45 angles, uh, 45 degrees also here. So times its perpendicular distance, which is dy. So that's just 3 sine 45 degrees plus, 500, plus fy, which is counterclockwise so that's going to be positive so that's 500 sine 45 degrees times its perpendicular distance so that's the total perpendicular distance is three meters plus three cosine 45 here and you will have the answer of 1060.6602 newton meter or 1.06 kilonewton meter 
counterclockwise arrow counterclockwise work okay i hope you had fun solving it even though you don't have a final answer to be pro to, to just to check if you're correct but i hope that forced you to analyze whether your solution and the way you wrote it and your final answer makes sense okay